Thank you, Alex. It's great to hear the inspiring discussion so far on China's path of uh, energy transition. My name is Wenxuan, and uh, I'm currently a senior analyst at Wood McKenzie. After watching this impressive video, I would like to take the chance to uh, thank Trina Solar to become the sponsor of this event. Next, we're very happy to have Todd Lee from Trina Solar joining our fireside uh, chat on the new era of carbon neutrality. Our guest speaker, Todd, is the president of Trina Solar in Asia Pacific. Todd joined Trina Solar in 2013, about 10 years ago in Thailand, and was in several different senior roles before appointed as the president of Asia Pacific. Our power and renewables outlook at Wood McKenzie um, forecasts a 5.6 trillion US dollar investment scale in renewable energy projects from now to 2050 in Asia Pacific region. And about 3 trillion of that will be invested in new solar projects. So solar will, be, it will play a critical role in achieving the carbon neutrality target in the region and also globally. As a leading industry expert, Todd will share some of his views um, over the next 25 minutes or so. Uh, okay, come to the question. Now, Todd, we, we know that Trina Solar is a global leader in the solar PV industry, operating across the vertical value chain from upstream manufacturing to project development. To start, I, I want to ask, as a renewable energy company, uh, what role does solar, uh, so, uh, Trina Solar play under global energy transition and the car uh, carbon neutrality goals? Well, um, thank you, Wenxuan, and thank you for, for your kind introduction. And uh, I'm quite very proud to represent Trina Solar today. Um, to back to your questions, um, Trina Solar was founded in 1997, inspired by the Kyoto Protocol and the Million Solar Rooftop Initiative announced, and now is one of the largest solar equipment manufacturers in China and leading the way in smart solar energy solutions for a net zero future. Um, Trina Solar has put in place a one plus three plus N multi-tiered business ecosystem that provides vertical solutions, including products systems and smart energy to help achieve carbon neutrality and the development of clean energy worldwide. Since it established um, 25 years ago, Trina Solar attached great importance to technological innovation to actively promote the establishment of a clean, low carbon, safe and efficient energy system so far. Um, Trina's SKL has set or broken 24 watt records so far in terms of PV cell conversion efficiency and the module output power. The scientific research and the development has led to, in, led to a remarkable performance environmentally. In May, um, we were awarded the LCA, which stands for Life Circle Assessment certificate for its 210 millimeter vertex modules by TUV Relay, becoming the first solar company proved for 210 millimeter modules. With the advantage of 210 millimeters wafers, vertex modules carbon emissions are at least 30% lower than the industry average in China. Taking the 30 years product life circle as an example, Trina Solar Vertex modules have an electricity emission factor of less than 0.01. Carbon emissions of thermal power are higher than 100 times. The Vertex modules achieve industry leading low carbon emissions. Trina Solar also diversify and deepen the ways to low carbonization. It has joined the Global Science-Based Targets Initiative in 2021 to help limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degree and contribute to the progress of the PV industry. Trina Solar has also worked with WWF China to initiate 
the Clean Energy for Earth campaign, a nonprofit sub project of Earth Hour. It calls on all sectors of society to use clean energy and aim to raise public awareness of clean energy to contribute to a net zero future. So I hope the, um, it answers your question, Wenxuan. Yeah, thank you very much, Todd. Uh, very impressive and uh, congratulations to the record breaking product. Um, we can see from your Thanks. introduction the, the, the key role that uh, technology innovation has played in the success of, uh, of uh, Trainer Solar and uh, I'm sure as well as the, the overall industry. Uh, my next question will be about the technology since I've always been wondering what kind of innovation uh, photovoltaic technologies will, will, will be leading the, the, global PV, the, the global PV growth in the, uh, in the next three to five years. Uh, can you give, give us some hints on that? Um, well, solar energy is a powerful force in achieving carbon, carbon neutrality. Um, Mr. Gao Jifan, our chairman of Trina Solar, stated PV power generation, energy storage, ultra high voltage power, and energy digitalization are the four pillars in achieving carbon neutrality. So power and efficiency has been two crucial factors to support above four pillars by providing high product value for customer, um, which should be realized by technology and in industrialization. We believe that the superposition of advanced 210 technology platform and end type will open up new opportunity for higher value and the lower LCOE. In back in July, Trina Solar just realized the breakthrough that its industrial large area 210 millimeters times 210 millimeters high efficiency per solar cell has achieved the efficiency of 24.5%, setting a new world record, which also reaches the limit. Therefore, accelerating the technology upgrade as 210 plus N type are becoming the first choice for further improving the conversion efficiency, reducing the system cost, also strengthen the company's comp competitiveness. So um, 210 technology platform is able to superpose any advanced technology thanks to its openness and ex extensive compatibility. Um, Trina has announced that it's building a plant in Xining that will focus on the new N-type and the 210 technology. This will ensure that the company can create increased value upon the next generation high efficiency and type technology as a major. In adopting 210 millimeter cell and N type technology, the module power will achieve 700 watt and a plus. And a such technical advance point, the way to the future in technology and the products for the PV industry. Um, so the combination of large sized products and advanced technology has opened up additional space for improved efficiency and the points head out the hope for reducing costs. 210 plus and type continue to optimize cost per watt and may contribute to improving quality in the PV industry. So this is my understanding of your question, Wenxia. Yep, indeed. I believe a more competitive LCOE is really needed to achieve better performance, uh, particularly during, uh, during the ongoing cost inflation of about 10 to 20% globally, according to our study. I think uh, our session before also mentioned this point. And um, now moving to um, one of the major solar markets in, in the region, Australia. We have seen that the amount of new rooftop solar capacity in Australia in, in the first half of this year is down on a year-on-year -year basis. 
Um, this has been the slowest start since uh, 2019. While the full year forecast by the Australian Clean Energy Regulator reflects a similar uh, reduction in new rooftop solar capacity, I think they forecast it about, at about 2.3 gigawatt this year, and uh, the, the performance from last year was uh, 3.2 gigawatt. Why is there such a, a decline in Australia? Well, um, the year 2020 and 2021 were boom years for rooftop solar because COVID travel restrictions meant there was more household spending on home improvement, including installation of solar panels, rather than overseas or interstate trips. So people are now traveling again, which is using up some of their income for sure, but now we also have greater economic uncertainty and a rising cost of living. So that is impacting purchasing decisions. Um, but I would like to highlight that 2.3 gigawatt of additional rooftop solar is still the third highest annual increase in rooftop solar market. Not as high as 2021 and 2020, but still very good. We are also seeing that the growth of rooftop solar is not even across all states. The states as New South Wales and Queensland are experiencing the strongest growth. These two states and others have been introducing higher electricity charges from the grid, which is driving households and business to turn to rooftop solar as an alternative. We are very familiar with the Australian rooftop market. Data from Sun Weeds, uh, which is an independent Australian market research company that specialized in data and analysis of the Australian solar industry, indicates Trina Solar is the top selling brand of solar panels in Australia. We also see that new high power and high efficiency modules um, coming onto the market will stimulate more demand for rooftop solar. For example, we have just launched our new generation of Vertex S residential modules that deliver maximum, maximum power output up to 430 watt. Higher power and higher efficiency modules are providing um, are proving popular because the average system size for Australian household is now more than eight kilowatt. Whereas in the past household, typically I could remember was at 6.6 .6 kilowatt system. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Todd. Um, I would also like to re remind our audience, don't forget to submit questions uh, to our guest speaker, Todd, on anything that you care about solar PV. Um, um, another question, APEC region has some of the world's largest producers of coal and uh, coal power generation still represents a sizable share of uh, the energy mix, which is also the case for Australia, the country that uh, we just talked about. Um, um, is it really possible for, for those type of countries to win itself off fossil fuels, uh, considering the coal is such a major industry in, in those countries and so many other domestic industries, such as the, the, the cement manufacturing, the fertilizer production, and et cetera, they, they really rely heavily on cheap coal generated power? Um, yeah. Utility scale solar in Australia has achieved a great parity already, meaning that it is now cheaper to generate electricity from solar farms than it is to generate from coal-fired power station. Solar farms are also much quicker to deploy. A coal-fired power station takes years to build, whereas a solar farm can be built in within a month. Um, everyone is grappling with the impact of climate change and wanting to reduce one's carbon footprint. There is a huge opportunity for Australian industry to transition away from electricity generation from coal to electricity generated from solar. Um, 
I remember you mentioned how the cement and the fertilizer industry use huge amounts of electricity in the production process. Farmers around the world are grappling with climate change. Imagine if they could use green fertilizer, fertilizer that is made using solar energy in the production process. All construction companies could use cement that was only produced using electricity from solar. As mentioned, uh, electricity from solar is cheaper and you would have a competitive product advantage in the case of fertilizers and cement. So as said, everyone now has a motivation to reduce their carbon footprint. Thanks, Wenxian. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Todd. That's great to hear. I believe this situation also applies to China and also some other countries. And I also personally think on top of LCOE, the cost of the supporting infrastructure to manage the renewables variation should also be accounted for, such as the energy storage, uh, battery or pumped hydro, which is currently a, quite a hot topic here in China. Uh, okay, now we have spent the last few questions addressing the market opportunity and the market outlook. Now let's turn towards the end of the project life cycle. Um, with, with many early solar projects reaching the end of its economic life, recycling is be becoming a hot issue. Um, Todd, can, can you tell us what, uh, what Trina Solar is uh, doing in the area of solar module recycling? Uh, that's actually a very good question. Um, disposal of scrap to PV modules at the end product life circle is a very important issue. As a responsible company, um, Trina Solar strictly abide by the e-waste management laws and the regulations of the countries in which we operate. For example, um, waste electrical and electronic equipment directives um, so-called WEEE, specifies that manufacturers of electrical and el electronic equipment must guarantee that waste products created in any EU member states must be recycled and re reused. In order to ensure that electrical and electronic e equipment, including PV modules, is properly managed by meanings of recycling, reusing, and regeneration. So we strictly abide by that. A key benefit of solar modules made from silicon is that it's a technology that is recyclable. Materials such as PV modules, uh, materials from PV modules such as silicons, silver, coppers, and aluminum can be recycled. The recycling of materials saves resources and reduces energy consumption. So as a leader in the PV industry, Trina Solar firmly believes that the recycling of scrap PV modules has significant economic and environmental value. Okay, great to, great to learn that the recycle part is already taken care uh, in Trina. Um, these areas were, was largely overlooked before in some regions, I think. Um, yeah. Okay, now uh, let's uh, switch to some audience, audience question. I got a very, uh, it's a very bored and uh, it's a very broad and a very, very general question from one of our audience. And also a questions that I was asked quite a lot. Where, where, the question is, where do you see the greatest growth in Asia Pacific? I suppose it's referring to the solar growth potential in different countries in APEC region. Uh, Todd? Um, yeah, th this is something we are keep looking into all the time. Um, I would say, um, as of now, our two biggest markets in Asia Pacific, of course, outside of China, have been Australia and India. 
those two countries to be very strong markets for us. Um, data compiled by some weeks it, in its 2021 Australia PV panel market view report, as I could remember, um, indicates China Solar was number one in the market share in Australia. In India, China, China Solar shipment volume in the, especially in this first quarter of 2022, is at historical highs. Um, our cumulative shipment has achieved 8 gigawatt in India from consistent sales performance since the company was established in India back in 2020. Some parts of India have been experiencing power outages especially during heat wave, diesel powered generators are now proving to be even more costly due to rising oil prices. Um, turning to solar energy helps company to reduce electricity bills, their carbon footprint, and is in line with India's pledge to achieve a target of net zero greenhouse gas emission by, 2020, by 2070, if I'm not wrong. We have seen Southeast Asia countries such as Philippines, Malaysia, Pakistan, Thailand, make a big push towards adoption of solar energy too. Um, just for instance, the growth in Philippines solar market in the coming years is forecast to largely be driven by utility scale projects. This has been proven by our great sales performance and market acceptance of our high power and high efficiency vertex modules. Um, we also see some new markets emerging recently, namely Indonesia. The Indonesian government announced in May that the country plans to install 361 gigawatt of solar power capacity by, 20, 20, by 2060. Indonesia is one of the world's largest producers of coal and has traditionally relied heavily on coal-fired power stations. So to announce this move towards solar is significant. We have already seen the change in policy result in most of solar projects being proposed in Indonesia. So uh, um, this is uh, pretty much about my understanding um, to answer your question. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, seems APEC region is in general is a good uh, destination for solar investment. Uh, great. This is also in line with our research report at Wood McKenzie. Uh, in the next decades, about two thirds of power demand growth uh, will happen in APAC. And uh, significant uh, investment, of course, will be uh, placed to meet those demand growth. Uh, and of course, there will, there will be frictions, but I think the big trend will still stay. Um, thank you very much, yeah. Todd, for today's chat. Uh, it's really nice. And I, I think now is uh, is a coffee break time till uh, twelve o'clock, and uh, hope everybody uh, enjoy the this this um, the rest of the day. And thank you, thank Todd, you, again. Wenxian. And.